great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, and the moon under her feet, and on her, cre on her head, a crown of twelve stars, and being with child. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. The miraculous image of Our Lady Guadalupe, whose today's feast is, fits perfectly this Holy Scripture that I just quoted from, from the 12th chapter of the book of the Apocalypse. Now Our Lady spoke to St. Juan Diego in his native language, the Aztec Nahuatl language. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. And when the interpreter heard the word of his descriptions, the way Our Lady described herself in the vision, the Spanish interpreter heard, understood or heard the sounds of Guadalupe because the interpreter was from the shrine of Our Lady Guadalupe in Spain. So when he heard this word, he knew exactly uh, how to locate that in his brain. And so he said, Guadalupe. But the real word that was used in the original Indian language that Juan Diego said was Cuatlatsupewich. And that's what the interpreter understood Guadalupe. <laughs> Um, so this word is very interesting because in that language, kwa means serpent. La means the, an article. And supewich means to crush or to stamp out. And so when Our Lady described herself as the kwa la supewich, in that uh, Indian language, she was telling Juan Diego that she is the stomper, the crusher of the head of the serpent. Genesis 3.15. So she proclaimed that she is that one that God appointed from the beginning of time after the fall of Adam and Eve to crush the head of Satan, the father of lies and the source of all temptations and all of infidelity and all of pride. So this would make sense because 327 years later, she appears to Lourdes and she reaffirms the four years previously, the dogma proclaimed by Pope Pius IX of the Immaculate Conception. She is completely anti-sin. She has no sin within herself, the mother of God, no original sin, no actual sin. And so it's just an echo from the Tepeyac, the, the, the hilltop of Mexico City, 327 years previously. And then, of course, 59 years later, she will appear to Fatima, Portugal, and she would predict as a prophetess, the proliferation of sin, especially under the errors of Russia, that will spin out of control in the, in the 20th and 21st centuries. <laughs> and then culminating, and get this, the continuation of this theme, at the end, my immaculate heart will triumph. So after all is said and done, after all the fireworks are finished, uh, of those errors of Russia, uh, there will be a, a swift and profound and worldwide public triumph, a rounded public victory of the Immaculate Heart of Mary over this serpent, as we know. And so therefore, we should consider this feast only a couple, few days after the Immaculate Conception, uh, to continue to congratulate and give our hearts over to the Blessed Virgin uh, for her being without any sin. And not only that, but we should consecrate ourselves in the style of St. Louis de Montfort, consecrate ourselves totally over to the Blessed Virgin in this age of sin, where St. Paul says, where sin abounds, grace abounds all the more. 
And so how can we have this all the more if we're not underneath the gaze and the shelter and the protection of the Blessed Virgin? And the Blessed Virgin told uh, San Juan Dieguito, uh, uh, have experience, come here and experience uh, the fruit of my affections. Isn't that a beautiful phrase? Come and experience the fruits of my, of my affections for you. Uh, come and also be the object of my compassionate attention. These are the words that she told that simple peasant Indian back in 1531. So therefore, with this consecration, we can move forward to become saints, right? All the sisters are working on becoming saints. I, I can see the halo sometimes uh, shining out. Uh, but sometimes it's hard because uh, sometimes we, uh, we might not match up to this perfection. And, and so, um, so this consecration is all the more important. Uh, for example, if a little bit of friction starts to stir up in us, you know, there might be a, a sister who's getting on my nerves. Uh, well, if I feel that she's getting on my nerves, that's good because that's sanctifying. That's no sin there. If you just feel it. But within my will and within my intellect, my intellect and will, I want to be a sister to my sister here in the monastery. And so, and even though I feel the animosities, that can even add to the great merit. But if I'm in the hands of the Blessed Virgin, then even though I might be biting my lip at some point, but then I'll say, oh, thank you, sister. And so it'll come out through my will. I'll be in charge if I belong to the Blessed Virgin more thoroughly. And all these virtues will start to come out of us in spite of feeling it, feeling the opposite. So anyway, this is a great feast uh, of Our Lady. And as we come to the communion rail to receive her son, let us not forget the words of Christ on the cross. Behold thy mother. Christ will say that again in Holy Communion. Behold thy beautiful mother. Be close to her. Give yourself to her. As he said on the cross, behold thy mother. Didn't Our Lady say to San Juan Diego, No estoy aquí que soy tu madre. Am I not here who am thy mother? In other words, throw yourself into my arms. You have nothing to lose but so much to gain. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.